Well hey there everybody and welcome back to the final night of Fatal Frame. Now before we get started there was something that Final Gamer James kept bringing up to me in the thread and I figured well now would be as good a time as any to go ahead and show it off. It's a little bit of an Easter egg. If you idle in the game for about five to six minutes or so something special will start to happen on screen. So I decided to go ahead and speed this up and in a little bit we'll be seeing just what happens when you decide to wait too long in the game. Yeah, after about five minutes or so, you actually start to see some ghostly bloody handprints all over the screen. Sad thing is that once you actually do make some movement with the controller or make any kind of button inputs, they will go away. But it is a nice little easter egg, but it is pretty easily overlooked. But with that out of the way, I think we should go ahead and get started with the final night here. We do have... Not very many fights to get through, but we do have quite a bit of story to get through. Now the first thing we have to do is, while well, that little child ghost was pointing to the Kodo here, we've actually been in this room before, but, well, as you can probably recall, uh, Miku could not really do much with the Kodo. But if we explore the room just a little bit, we actually do find there is a new item waiting next to these pictures we found before. And wouldn't you know, coincidentally, it just happens to be some Koto sheet music. After, that play, after playing that pretty short melody, we find that there is actually even more of the mansion for us to explore. Now the attic area isn't really that big. Actually, pretty sparse and narrow for the most part, but it does seem like there is a ray of light shining up through the floor here. Seems like maybe we can peek on down through it and, I don't know, maybe catch sight of something we might have missed before. It's nothing really that new, it's just the floating female head that we fought, I think, back on the first night. Saw this head rolling down the stairs and it decides to make one last attempt at trying to attack us. But in all honesty, especially with our more powered up camera, that particular fight isn't really anything to worry about. But at the far end here, we do find some more herbal medicine. And before we continue on, there is a really easy to miss hidden ghost up here in the rafters. 
There's just a little bit of a static that goes off. But yeah, hidden up here on the uh, the little woven mat, we actually do find the tortured spirit of the long-haired woman. Now, as to what she was actually doing up here, or if maybe she suffered her last ghastly moments up in the attic for some reason, it's never really revealed. We've definitely seen that particular room. That's the ante room right next to the uh, study of the folklores. But I think that might have been Kyrie crying next to those two kimono clad dolls. Yeah, more than anything, all of these attic esque areas are just giving us little previews of places we have actually already been such as this particular rafter area here. We're actually right above that large Buddha room where we, uh, I think we got the Mask of Reflection before and we fought the Family Master. More importantly though, we actually do find some more Type 90 film. And as we make our way near that main large altar on the ground, there's even more static, which indicates that there's actually another hidden ghost. Now, this particular hidden ghost, you may notice, is pretty unique in that it actually has a very almost photograph human-looking face. And that's because that is actually uh, Makoto Shabata, who is one of the co-creators and producers for Fatal Frame. I guess they decided to make a little bit of an easter egg of their own visage by putting it into the game. But outside of this stone mirror, there's really nothing else waiting for us up in the rafters, so let's go ahead and make our way off of here. Even though I should point out that we cannot actually run up here, I guess, I guess uh, Miku is a bit afraid of falling and hurting herself. This sparse new room, we find a cell with the ghostly after image, what appears to be Kiri. Also on the wall here, it's kind of hard to tell because of the low res texture, but seems like a really fiery looking painting. Not actually sure what it's supposed to be. Maybe someone in the thread might have some ideas. Maybe it has something to do with the calamity. But inside of the cell itself, we do find a few items we can pick up. First one is actually going to be hidden here on the bookshelf. It's a portion of Kyrie's diary. Now, what we are actually going to be learning throughout this chapter is that Kyrie led a very depressing life for the most part, especially since well, she was pretty much born and raised just to be used as a ritualistic sacrifice. But here we see that she actually did manage to get some portion of happiness in her life when she caught sight of some young gentleman outside of her window walking through the garden. And over on the table here we do find yet another portion of the diary. 
It goes along more with the fact that Kyrie was very conscious of the fact that she was a rope shrine maiden and that she had a she she was very predestined to die, but well, she finally got a taste of joy and did she really want to give that up? Outside of that ghostly humming, between these two pillars here, we do find the final piece of the mirror. And in addition, we do find Carrier's hairpin. that ghostly flashback, we see Kyrie standing in a romantic interlude with what appeared to be Mafuya, but it couldn't possibly have been him. We also find one last diary entry in this little cell here. And we see that where Kyrie actually first saw the young man was through her single solitary window looking out onto the world from her cell. Yeah, we actually took a picture of Kyrie here, back I think in the first chapter as well. This is looking out where we fought uh, Tomoe, and I think the girl in the well earlier on. And then I think it's time we go ahead and leave this bleak little room. Rather unexpectedly, we get a visit from the other Kyrie that we've been menaced at the end of each night with. In this particular instance, we actually do want to run away from her as quickly as possible, as if she does catch us in this particular state, she will instantly kill us. Even the stone mirror will only give us a brief reprieve, and she'll just immediately kill us again. Thankfully though, once we actually head out towards the Cherry Atrium, she mysteriously disappears. Now our main goal right now is to actually head towards the Moon Shrine, but there are a few little additional bits and pieces to pick up before we head there. The first one is actually going to be over in the Buddha Room, I think. You may have noticed when we were walking along the rafters that there were a few new shiny items waiting at the altar. The first thing we pick up is a portion of the priest manual. This kind of elucidates a little bit more regarding the ritual and what has to be done to make sure that the Wrote, or the, uh, the gates to hell are kept closed. <laughs> 
Yeah, we see here that it actually mentions that the gate is the entrance to the land of the dead. And if the ritual fails, that the malice will be let loose from hell, and the calamity will ensue. And the final priest manual over here. The only thing we really gather from this is the fact that there is really no written documentation as to what happens in the mansion's basement. Which seems a bit odd because I think that first priest manual we got was pretty much saying exactly what happened there. But, with all that picked up in the Buddha room, the next place we want to head to is actually right upstairs, back in the ante room, where we saw Kyrie crying. Now, if we go over to where we saw her ghostly figure crying before, we do find a brand new item. There are more entries in the Kyrie's diary. Now, we already know the outcome of what happened to Kyrie's lover, but the question still kind of remained, did Kyrie know about it? And that's pretty much answered here. She apparently had some vision or dream of him, looking very sad, and she came to that realization that, invariably, that meant that he had died. And it was due to their meeting that he is no longer of this earth. So she very much felt guilty about what happened to him. And in the end, she wanted nothing more than for them to be together forever. That's actually all we need to pick up in the mansion itself. The next point that we want to go to, we do actually have just one more little optional side trip we want to take. And it's in an area that we have been to quite a bit, and that is back at the Abyss. I do want to point out, though, that the actual music they decide to go with for the final night actually has a really good sense of tension. But in the abyss, we don't actually have any new items to pick up. Instead, we do have to catch a couple of hidden away ghosts. The first one is actually going to be on this small little island here. If we look out off to the distant water, it's a bit hard to see. There we go. Yeah, this was actually where Kyrie's lover's body was dumped after they, after the family master had him murdered. And if we go to the final little mound in the back here, we do find another hidden ghost. And this burden man is actually the other co-creator of Fatal Frame, Ketsuki Kikiyuchi. And Another little easter egg, but yeah, apparently, via the lore of the game, he was apparently the one that was given the task of dumping the body here, and I think he had committed suicide, and that's where he met his final, uh, final resting place. But that is the final little bits of what we need to do in the mansion. Now it's time to head back into the moon shrine and back into the moon well. 
Okay, so I just wanted to double check and make sure I wasn't missing any items behind the column there. Down in this dank well, there are a couple of new items for us to pick up. Nice bottle of sacred water. And over here in the corner, we do find a nice box of film. Or a spirit stone, my bad. But we didn't really get much of a chance to look around down here before, but there is a door that, as of right now, is well locked. But if we investigate this mummified corpse here, we well, do see that in front of it is a pedestal that actually has a recess that's perfectly shaped for a hairpin. And with that door unlocked, I'm actually going to go ahead and call this an update. Next time, we're going to finish up Fatal Frame and see just what happens to Miku and Kyrie. See you then.